Isn't it not about him hearing you? Isn't it about you being heard? Oh, my voice will be heard. I want the world to know that I'm alive. I will no longer be silent. Chills down the spine. She is done. She is so done with all of Cody's bullshit. And thank God, it is about time. It's about Take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. You know what? It's not my fault. He's like in love with me. The first tell all of season 18 definitely had a lot to talk about. Did you guys just have great sex? From all the ass? Yes. I'm guilty of not loving them. But first, and importantly, we must discuss their looks for the tell alls. Oh, hey, Sukanya. Nice blazer. Where'd you get it? I got mine where every classy lady gets a blazer at her local Old Navy. Now Robin's wearing a couch cushion underneath a pale cardigan. I feel like she thinks the more she dresses like a British teacup, the less people will hate her. Mary totally matches Sukanya's blazer power. I'm sorry, have I mentioned? I love a woman in a blazer. Christine's hair is long and shiny. Janelle is kind of rockin' Robin's look here. Uh. Just, I'm just being honest. It's where we go and like, tell it how it is. Kudos to the editors for doing a good job of building up the anticipation to Suki's interviews. I love that they're showing everyone getting ready. Honestly, this is the show. This should be the show. This feels so much more real than the B-roll party dinner footage we've been getting and the multiple outdoor campfire meeting setups. Like. This is great. This is because it's real. It's like them getting ready for their jobs. I am feeling nauseous. Uh, whew. Well, that shit I've been talking all season is attempting to crawl up my esophagus. Cody's rocking his favorite look on the way out the door, the sunglasses headband. In the episode, Cody gives us a little preview of what his tell-all narrative is gonna be. You make choices when you're young, you know, you get older, and you don't like those choices. Well, surely this means he's going to own being the reason for the destruction of the family, right? Wrong. Are you ready for a new uh, variety show of Sister Wives? <laughs> this turned into a variety show, like what would be your theme song? Not gonna lie, I sort of immediately hate Suki piggybacking on Cody's assertion that this is in any way, shape, or form similar to a variety show. A whole lot of singing, a whole lot of laughing, a whole lot of loving from Then maybe, maybe they should feel this. Feel the pain that we. <laughs> <laughs> like, variety shows have. Variety! <laughs> this whole season has been nothing but confessionals, and we are ending the season on four all confessionals episodes. This is the direct opposite of a variety show. It is absent of any variety. But I do get on board with Suki asking everyone but Robin what their show song would be. No. And the moment I get on board is when Mary reveals her song would be single ladies. All the single ladies? All the single ladies. <laughs> put your hands up. Now put your hands up. Up in a club, club. Just pop up. Don't pay him any attention. In the toes. Can't help it. The girl can't help it. Is she got a lot? Oh, what they Christine's call? Christine's song is. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Today I'm feeling We Will Rock You by Queen. <laughs> Losing my religion? <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 oh. I don't think I've hit rock bottom. I'm not as angry as I was before. So Kanye asks, what about Robin? Well, I fell in love with Robin. I never fell in love with anybody else. Okay, Cody, here's a question. If you never fell in love with the original three, why are you still acting like they're in the wrong here? You paint yourselves and Robin as a couple innocent puppies getting kicked by mean old Christine. I've never... <laughs> And treated like this. Why aren't you on your knees begging for forgiveness for promising three women your eternity, your love, your life, and then ditching them for...
I met Robin and I started weeping for joy and didn't stop for months. Okay, this is weird. Who meets the love of their life and then spends two months weeping? <laughs> to Cody, it's like this big romantic thing. To me, I'm like disgusted because you are already married with a pregnant wife at home. Stay alive, no matter what occurs, I will find you. Suki and Rob. Robin is super uncomfortable with Sukanya relaying this information to her. He said he fell in love with you because he could finally be his full self. He could finally be vulnerable and love you. And that yeah. was the I mean, she is quaffing that hair like the more body in it, the less questions she'll have to answer. See, and I didn't know that. Yeah, I did not know that. Sometimes the person who is the favorite doesn't know they're the favorite until the person doing the favorite publicly says so on national television. I did not know that until like just recently. Really? Really? I mean, it, was, it seems like it, it was like a little bit obvious. And it still makes me wonder because I wonder if it's just the rewriting of history. So there seems to be a lot of that. No, in my mind, she means Cody, but she's for sure talking about her arch nemesis, Christine, right? When your husband is saying he wept for joy for months because he had found you. But I don't think he was saying that to them. But I don't think he said that out loud. I don't love you the way I love Robin. Okay. But that's just how he was feeling. Your doesn't taste like a broken dove at all. Okay. So when a person is feeling that kind of inner joy. Yeah. Okay. Are you saying Christine was justified in leaving him? You shut up! I'm so f scared right now! You shut up! It's kind of hard just to suppress it and just be like, okay. Well, I did my best. I don't know what else I'm supposed to, what else I was supposed to do. <laughs> I did my part. I hired McKelty and paid her in fashion advice. She had no previous work experience and I allowed her to be free manual labor because we didn't get enough of this in the multiple episodes they already talked about it in. We get to hear one more time how much of a burden it's been for Cody and Robin to have to hide their love for one another. I constantly was suppressing and hiding my relationship and any kind of connection I had with Cody. The sacrifices that I made. I mean, to me it sounds like Everything coming out of Cody and Robin's mouth confirms Christine's story that they were each other's favorites to the exclusion of the rest of the family. Back with Cody, we are no longer dancing around the Robin subject. Cody has fully embraced his relationship with Robin, his exclusive love for Robin. And I have to give him credit because this annoyed the shit out of me the last two seasons that he wouldn't, that he refused to even talk about her. Respectfully decline. When I met Robin, it was like first time ever being in love. Mm. Mm. So romantic. Falling in love when you've got a pregnant wife and 40 kids back at home. That's not anybody's fault. Clearly nobody is responsible for me leaving my three older wives and 13 <clears throat> original children. It's just one of them things that happens. Glad that he has that with her. It's very unfortunate that the rest of the family had to go by the wayside. What a polite way to describe somebody abandoning their three wives and 13 kids. I was one of the first people to point out, look, she's your soulmate. You need to acknowledge that she's your soulmate. Christine's like, I called that sh Nailed it. I've spent two years watching Christine and Janelle talk about me without me. And they're just trash talking me. Mm -hmm. So Kanya, here's where you stop him and you say, but haven't you trash talked them on the show too? Roll the jerks tape. They're tra trash talking me because I'm guilty. Actually, yes, I am. I'm not loving them. Wait a minute. What? Okay, this is where you chime in and say, so aren't they justified in divorcing you then? But are you admitting that you are guilty of not loving them? Were you withdrawing their oh, love? No, 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 no. <laughs> in the episode, we enter the uncomfortable flashback segment. Things got so uncomfortable between the two of you um, that this clip is going to be uncomfortable to watch, but we have to. Suki, 
You don't need to give Cody a trigger warning for his own ass No. No. You stay and talk. I'm listening to you. I love them doing the video within the video thing. This is what I want more of. I don't just want to watch their reaction to this like long drawn out Cody and Janelle fight. I want to watch their reaction to every controversial thing Cody has said. Cody spends the whole time in his little square looking like he's trying to keep a turd from poking out of his butthole. Janelle could be watching The Little Mermaid for all we know. Cody's reaction continues to reinforce Force his douchebag image in my mind. He's like, what's wrong with this? They show us Robin's reaction, who's doing the classic I'm bored. Finally, the fight is over. Sookie's like, whoo! Oh, that was crazy, right? Like, are your noodles okay? Oh, whoo! That was really difficult to watch. Was it as f for you as it was for me? This has got to be one of the, the worst fights that you've ever had before with Janelle. Be honest at this point i'm waiting for some gotcha moments i'm waiting for them to roll the gabe crying because cody forgot his birthday clip i'm not really interested in suki asking cody were you surprised at how heated your own fight got ask some tougher questions move it along already pretend this is television i've got a lot of uh, you know contempt for the way she's treated me you just admitted over and over again that you don't love them. You're not in love with them. You never were in love with them. And yet you're still insisting you are the victim. You know, if I'm small, it makes them feel okay for how they treated me. What? Did they tell you they loved you and then 30 years later be like, well, actually, I'm more in love with my last than I am with you or something? Like, that's what you did to them. I might not have been in love, but I was being loved. Are you serious? You ransacked Mary's soul to keep your bank account fat. We're back to reflecting on the big fight between Cody and Janelle. Suki's like, so Robin, hey, hey, Robin, can I get your attention over here? What did he tell you about the fight? And then we get this, Cody was victimized by Janelle's Christmas tree story. When he saw the Christmas tree and she sat there and said she was taking it over to the rental to spend that time with Christine, that was one of the triggers, I guess you'd say, for him. So when Cody told me he was triggered by the Christmas tree, I automatically knew Janelle's the devil. She was giving more support and more understanding and siding with Christine. I am so tired of this. Janelle wronged him because she sided with Christine. Um, and her boys. She was also siding with her own children, whom Cody chose to go full ass on. And Janelle has answered this. She was like, what am I gonna do? Go be Cody and Robin's nanny? The flashy girl from Flushing. The nanny named Janelle. Suki asks Cody if he's jealous of Janelle and Christine, and he's like, heck yes I am. It's like, you spend two years blowing your own wives off, you turn around, all of a sudden they've united against you for no reason. I'm jealous because I see it as a big F you to Cody. He's like, we're gonna get along now because this will really piss Cody off. You just said you never loved any of them. They're allowed to side against you in Miserablin. You two have sailed off into the sunset and left them in your fart dust. Of course they're gonna unite against you. Suki finally asks a question I care about. How easy would it have been for you to be like, all right, I want to see the kids during the holidays. Can I show up? Why couldn't you ask that question? And Cody's like, um, because of Robin? Duh. And they're trying to blame Robin. Janelle has even been going, oh, Robin is this broken dove that Cody has to protect. From all the ass Yes. I feel like they have all been absolute ass to her. He's admitting that he sees Robin as a little broken bird. I mean, it's like, Maybe that explains his psychotic obsession with protecting her over the last 13 years. He's also calling his own children ass It's like jerks wasn't enough. He needed to level up on the vitriol towards his own children. And what's weird is they're ass me and I just put up with it. What's weird is Cody's definition of putting up with it. Like, oh yeah, throwing them all away to go live a monogamous life with Robin. Truly a prize they should all be grateful for. I did not want them separating me and her from each other. If you don't kiss Robin's ass, you don't get a relationship with daddy. If you don't kiss Robin's ass, you don't get a relationship with daddy. So where I go, she's going to go. I go take a sh she's right there with me. When I did that boys trip to Oklahoma, oh yeah, snuck her in a closet behind. They didn't even know. She was there the whole time. My favorite moment by far of the whole episode is Suki talking about Janelle and Cody's different non-negotiables. But it feels like there's two different non-negotiables, right? For yeah. Janelle, it's the kids. 
Yeah. And for him, a lot of it revolves around you and protecting you. See? Like, get along with you. No. And nope. Nope, that, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't make me look very good, Suki. I've put a lot of energy, Suki, into telling everyone this season it was all Christine's fault. The last bit of the tell-all goes a little bit off the rails. Did you guys just have great sex? Mm. Um. Okay. How's your sex life? Me's a freaky girl. Uh-oh. Boner alert. This has gotten the online fans a chattering. I think she thinks I'm hot. I got nice pecs. You like his pecs? <laughs> you just felt that you were there to be, what, a physical yes, boy toy? Oh my God, so okay. Please never refer to Cody as a boy toy, like ever again. Make it stop, make it stop. She just I felt feel like, like a good piece looking. of meat. Now there has been a lot of discussion about people being surprised at Cody and Janelle's sex life. And I gotta say, I was surprised too. I assumed when Christine and Mary told us it'd been decades since he dusted their off, the same was true for him and Janelle. And I stand corrected. The episode ends with Cody's head in his hands and Suki asking, Did you guys just have great sex? Mm. <laughs> did not see them ending the first tell all talking about sex. And it almost makes up for them spending the entire first episode going on and on about this Janelle Cody fight. Almost, but not really. Really, this episode could have been about 20 minutes long, but I only think that because I have no ownership in Puddle Monkey, the production company that makes these things. Thank God this one's down, and I hope we can move on to some more interesting topics in the next three tell-alls, like Mary's bone chilling, my voice will be heard, yes. Don't miss Sarah and I from Reality Squad talking about the next episode live on Monday night at 7 Eastern. Plus, as usual, meet me back here next week to recap episode 16.